Human papillomaviruses, HPVs, produce epithelial tumors of the skin and mucous membrane. More than 100 HPV types have been detected. Recurrent respiratory papillomatosis, RRP, is a disease caused by HPV. Benign tumors in the upper airway may cause significant airway obstruction or voice change. RRP manifests most commonly in children younger than five years or in adults over 40. The types of human papillomaviruses associated with most cases of recurrent respiratory papillomatosis are transmitted either in utero to the developing fetus or during delivery. In contrast, the adult onset disease correlates very closely with sexual activity, but we believe that certain cases may also be a delayed onset from the juvenile type transmission. Between 1,500 and 2,500 new cases of childhood onset RRP are estimated to occur each year in the United States. Incidents among children of this fairly rare disease can be difficult to detect. Justin was diagnosed with laryngeal papilloma at 18 months. Uh, we spent a year going to pediatricians, you know, being told that he had the croup and the strider and, and giving the meds and doing the steam showers and stuff and nothing was helping. When Dayton was about one and a half, actually, he started having some breathing problems and I would take him to his pediatrician and she thought it was strider or croup or like an asthma attack or something like that. And we would try breathing treatments and different medications and nothing seemed to help. So it, eventually she sent us down here to Children's Hospital to see Dr. Wytrek to get scope to see what was going on, what was blocking his breathing. And um, that's when he was about 21 months, we found out that he had RRP. RRP in children is usually diagnosed uh, by endoscopic techniques where an otolaryngologist or ENT doctor uh, passes a light, usually attached to a camera, through the nose to examine the back of the throat and to examine the vocal cords uh, of the larynx. And that is usually where you can see uh, the papillomas. And the same technique is used for diagnosing in adults. Uh, the other part of the diagnosis is a pathologic diagnosis uh, where a biopsy is obtained in the operating room and the pathologist uh, confirms the diagnosis of the papillomas. There is currently no known cure for RRP, with surgery, most often under general anesthesia, being the common method of controlling these growths. If untreated, these respiratory tumors will continue to grow blocking the patient's airway with suffocation being the likely result. The two main surgical methods that uh, surgeons use to remove papillomas uh, are the uh, laser, either a CO2 laser or something called a KTP laser, or an instrument called a micro debrider, which actually suctions the material into a rotating uh, blade and it essentially vacuums away uh, the papillomas. We've come to Children's Hospital um, over 80 times for surgeries, um, anywhere from every two weeks to every couple months, and we've tried different experimental injections and oral medications, and some have worked or helped and some have not. It's just been a trial and error experience. My everyday activities are pretty much the same other than when, if I, I, I get exhausted easier when running or doing harder activities. The RRP Foundation was created to provide patient family support, serve as an information resource for patients and practitioners, promote public awareness, and aid in the prevention, cure, and treatment of the disease by encouraging promising research studies. Jennifer Wu, who was diagnosed with RRP as a child, is the current Foundation President. To a large extent, the Foundation is the community. Uh, we as an organization meet patients and families along their journey of illness at every step. Uh, the, the very newly diagnosed patients, the kids who are being teased in the playground, the moms and dads who stay up late at night worrying about how to pay for surgeries. Uh, every life-saving operation and every voice-saving operation we celebrate, and every time we lose a member of our community, uh, we as a foundation are there. We as a foundation are the community. My late husband and I, we had went to um, an RRP meeting in Charleston, uh, North Carolina. There we had met uh, 
Mr. Bill Stern and, and Dr. Broker, and it was just wonderful because I felt like we wasn't alone, you know, we wasn't the only ones, you know, with this, that there are other people out there, you know, that, that are more, that can explain it to me better and offer me hope, that there is hope that they will find a cure for this disease. The foundation keeps RRP practitioners abreast of the latest new treatment approaches. In addition, foundation makes them aware of those aspects of the disease that most severely impact the lives of patients and families. OBGYNs only see a patient at birth. They need to know that a patient who gets RRP may face over 100 surgeries in their life and this should be factored into their decision to do a cesarean section, which in some cases may help prevent the disease. We also need to make pediatricians and emergency room practitioners aware of RRP because they are often the first to see a child who have symptoms of this disease. Research toward more effective therapies and eventually a cure has discovered that some non-surgical treatments, including vaccines, may prove significant in the battle against RRP. Two drugs that have shown benefit are sodafovir, an antiviral medication that we can inject into the larynx, into the sites of involvement that uh, have been shown in numerous studies to be beneficial. And in the most severe cases, uh, interferon has shown some benefit too, which is a very potent uh, drug which uh, modifies the immune system uh, to help patients better fight this disease. Currently, the priorities of the foundation include motivating rigorous clinical trials for promising new therapies for the disease and fueling more intensive research and investigation of new diagnostic and treatment protocols for pulmonary RRP. Pulmonary manifestations of RRP are serious and can be very devastating. Only about 5% of the total RRP patient community is affected with pulmonary papillomas, but those alone account for about 95% of the mortality associated with the disease. Treatment for pulmonary papillomas uh, is, is by and large difficult. And to this extent, the foundation has launched a recent Young Investigators Research Initiative to encourage exploration of new treatment modalities for pulmonary papillomas. One of the most important unanswered questions about pulmonary papillomatosis is how the infected cells can migrate from the larynx through the trachea and bronchia to the lungs. If we could understand how infected cells gain that mobility, then we'd be in a good position to find inhibitors. The second major issue, once a person has developed pulmonary papillomas, is how to deliver inhibitors to the lungs, whether it be through circulation or through an aerosolized delivery system. The RRP Foundation is a completely volunteer organization comprised of RRP families, practitioners, researchers, and friends. By creating greater awareness of RRP, providing support to patients and families, and encouraging ongoing research, they are offering hope for the future in the battle against this disease. For more information about RRP or to donate and become a subscriber to the RRP Foundation, contact the Foundation or visit rrpf.org.